What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with another mail call for Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years' experience in comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today's mail call is a rare Golden Age comic book from a pedigree collection I'm excited to share with you. This book has so much going for it, we have a lot to cover in this unboxing and market report. I purchased this comic directly from Lone Star Comics, and we see their characteristic, excellent packaging. I think they have safely shipping a comic book down to a science, and few outfits do a better job. While I extricate it from this packaging, please take a moment to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is Lone Star's typical triple boxing. And as I said, they do a beautiful job. The boxes themselves are suspended within foam. The book is covered here in bubble wrap in the very last box. And of course, it's in a mylar and it's CGC encased. Let's get it out of that mylar and have a little better look at it. This thing's a beauty. This is a 3.5, but I just, I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen a 3.5 look so beautiful. Well, as I like to say, what is it and why do we care? This is Adventure Comics number 102 in CGC 3.5 with creamed off-white pages. It's a rare Golden Age comic book cover dated February, March, 1946. It's got a phenomenal cover featuring the Sandman and Sandy the Golden Boy, his teenage sidekick, by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, the team that famously created Captain America at the beginning of the Golden Age. Adventure Comics being an anthology, the lead story features Sandman, and the second story stars Starman, and it just so happens that this book is the last appearance of each in the Golden Age. Starman next appears in Justice League of America number 29 from 1964, and the Sandman next appears in Justice League of America number 46 from 1966 a full 20 years after this book was published. This is also an exceedingly rare book, which we'll talk about later. But what's really special about this specific comic is that it's from the Big Apple Pedigree Collection, assembled by collector James Hilton. The Big Apple Pedigree is, to date, the only recognized pedigree collection that was assembled by an African-American comic book collector. I'm absolutely thrilled to add this comic book to my collection. So let's break down all the cool details about this little treasure. Sandman is one of DC's oldest superheroes, created by Gardner Fox and artist Burt Christman in the Pulp Hero Mold for Adventure Comics number 40, which was published in July 1939. He looked super creepy in his suit, complete with tie, handkerchief, and fedora, with the addition of a cape and World War I-era gas mask. He needed the gas mask because the weapon he used to fight crime was a gun that expelled a sleeping gas that he used to subdue villains, and he wasn't immune to the effects of the gas. He was a mainstay in Adventure Comics for over six years, spanning the entire World War II from issue number 40 until this issue, number 102. Sandman was a founding member of the JSA, but was removed from the membership after issue 21 of All-Star Comics, when they trimmed the team because comic book page counts had recently shrunk from 60 down to 52 pages due to the necessity of conservation of paper for the war effort and getting all of the team members' face time in the reduced page count became a chore. 
In Adventure Comics number 69, Sandman got a makeover. Losing his traditional suit, fedora, cape, and gas mask in favor of a purple and yellow pair of tights that appeared more superhero-y and less pulp fiction-y. In the same issue, he gained a sidekick, Sandy the Golden Boy, in another move that made him more like the rest of the superheroes of the day. Very soon after the new look was introduced for Sandman, Jack Kirby returned from his tour of duty in Europe in World War II, and Joe Simon and Jack Kirby famously took over the Sandman feature in Adventure Comics. Issue number 74 was the first cover appearance of the new look Sandman and Sandy, and is a Simon and Kirby classic, the first of several in the series, including the subject of this video, issue number 102, which was their last collaboration on the character. Unfortunately, while Simon and Kirby turned in a really great cover for this issue, featuring an interesting-looking villain revealed with the removal of his mask and a beautifully rendered damsel in distress, this scene does not appear in the comic book. Indeed, the lead story is not even by Simon and Kirby. The writer has been lost to time, but the penciler was relative newcomer Gil Kane in the style of Simon and Kirby. The immensely talented Gil Kane would, of course, go on to play an enormous role in the dawn of the Silver Age, and his career spanned over five decades in comic books. He renders this story beautifully, especially when one considers he was asked to do so in the style of Jack Kirby so as to provide artistic continuity for the regular readers. The story itself doesn't feature a supervillain, but rather corrupt politicians and greedy businessmen who stand in the way of one man's dream to build a children's recreation center in the city. The Sandman and Sandy engage in some rather mundane foiling of their schemes, and Sandman is equipped only with a gun he calls his wire poon that is used to shoot a small harpoon attached to, you guessed it, a spool of sturdy wire. In the end, the businessmen, gangsters, and politicians are defeated, and the children get their rec center. The only tie-in to the stories of old is that they've helped one man's dream be achieved. Although it's a well-plotted and drawn story, it's an inauspicious end to one of the mainstay heroes of DC's golden age of comic books. The second story in this book features Starman, whose first solo appearance is also in Adventure Comics, issue number 61 from April of 1941, three years after Sandman but still very early in the Golden Age. Created by Gardner Fox, and Jack Burnley, amateur astronomer Ted Knight, invents a gravity rod that allows him to fly and manipulate energy and uses it to fight crime. He was also a mainstay of Adventure Comics from his creation until the issue that is the subject of our video today, issue 102, and was often featured in the cover during that period. Starman was also a member of the Justice Society of America but was not a founding member as Sandman was. Starman joined the JSA in All-Star Comics number 8, which is a big key issue with a famous cover for another reason. In this story, featuring a script by Joe Samixon, with pencils by Emil Gershon, Starman is investigating meteors that fortuitously land on buildings that end up looted. His antagonists are regular criminals, although their leader, Shiver, has a shtick that he's always cold and wears a winter coat and earmuffs even in the dead of summer. It turns out he hatched a scheme to fire fake meteors at buildings to cover up his gang's crimes until Starman foils their plans. For those of you not familiar with Pedigree Comics, Pedigree collections are comic book collections that the collecting community recognizes as special because of their rarity, high grade, and the size of the collection. Because CGC has a very prominent role in comic book collecting, preservation, and conservation, 
they've been a major contributor to recognizing these special collections and assigning them pedigree status with a special denotation on the label. Many collectors hunt pedigree copies of books for their rarity and desirability, and they typically sell for a premium to other books of the same grade. The Big Apple Pedigree is a large collection numbering in the thousands assembled by collector James Hilton. He collected comics from 1939 right up to his passing away in 1968. Upon his passing, his collection remained in storage at his residence until his nephew Ron discovered the collection and took a few to Christie's auction house in 1994. The collection was brought to market over the following decade by Christie's and well-known dealer Phil Weiss. The earliest books have a distinctive mark on the cover thought to be a distributor's mark from the newsstand from which James was buying the comics because later issues lack this mark. The comics from the Big Apple pedigree have varying condition and page qualities. Apparently, some of the comics were stored indoors in trunks, while others were in either a garage or a shed. Our example, from 1946, appears to have been purchased from the famed newsstand because it has the distinctive curly cue, but to have unfortunately suffered from poor storage conditions being graded at a 3.5 with cream to off-white pages. I will say that this is absolutely the best presenting 3.5 I have ever seen. I have comic books graded at 5.5 in my collection that look not nearly as good as this book. CGC's graders notes indicate stains to both the front and back cover and staple rust, but these do not detract from the overall presentation of this comic book at all. And it's quite a rare comic book. There are only 18 universal copies of Adventure Comics number 102 in the CGC census, with a median grade of only 5.5. I have no way of knowing how many of these might be pedigree copies, but I sure am pleased to add this one to my collection. Comics this rare don't trade hands very often, so it's very difficult to establish a fair market value for them. But, oddly enough, this very comic book was sold on eBay May 12, 2023, for $375 plus taxes and shipping. So naturally, GoCollect calculates the current fair market value as this price because it was the most recent sale in a public venue. But digging deeper, we can see four total public sales for this book over the last 21 years that have been recorded by GoCollect. Not being a big key or high grade book, it was most likely originally sold by Phil Weiss and the first public record I found of it being sold was in a heritage auction in September 2002, when CGC was relatively new. There it changed hands for $150 plus shipping and taxes. Fifteen years later, in 2017, it sold for $170 plus shipping and handling in an eBay fixed price sale. Then. In 2020, it sold on eBay in an auction for $326 plus fees before the aforementioned fixed price sale earlier this year on eBay for $375 plus fees. I purchased it directly from Lone Star Comics in late August for $335 plus shipping and taxes, which came to $371 out the door. With rare and special books like this, I consider myself fortunate to be able to acquire them at or slightly below the market price. And given that there are only 18 copies of this comic book in the census, and I was able to acquire the Big Apple Pedigree copy, purchased directly from the newsstand by James Hilton himself, I was delighted to be able to add this book to my collection at this price. I've said it before, but it's worth repeating just how very fortunate and humbled I feel to be the steward of such a rare Golden Age comic book from an important collection with great provenance, and I realize being able to own this piece of history is an embarrassment of riches that few individuals get to enjoy. That's why I'm so happy to share it with the viewers of the channel. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video on Adventure Comics number 102 from the Big Apple Pedigree. 
Anyone else hunting Golden Age comics? How about pedigree comics? How about the Big Apple pedigree specifically? More broadly, should I just enjoy this comic? Or should it get a full conservation treatment? Aside from preserving the book and potentially improving the grade, do you think that would affect the provenance? If we go the conservation route, do we risk losing the pedigree status with CGC? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy hunting, and take care of one another.